Yo, good afternoon. It's uh, Monday, September 17th. Going back home. I want to share, don't close this. I want to share uh, the verse of the day, Isaiah 40, 29. It says, God gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Isaiah 40, 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Let me ask you this. Where did we get off thinking that God tells us that we got to fake all the time? That we can't be real? That we can't show weaknesses? Where's God mandating us to never show weaknesses? To never be tired? He says he increases the power of the weak. He gives strength to the weary. Then I'm going to I'm going to connect that to another verse from uh, the book of Corinthians. So Paul, you know he wrote many books in the New Testament and he wrote to the Corinthians and in chapter 12 he gets this revelation. He's been asking God for deliverance of something he called a thorn in the flesh, right? Maybe a physical infirmity, maybe a mental infirmity. We don't totally know, but he's pleading with God. He says three times he pled with him, right? Um, it would be great for everyone to read that chapter. Chapter 12 of the book of, uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But here's what I'm going to paraphrase you. Paul writes, But God said, my grace is sufficient for you because my power is made perfect in weakness. That's God saying that. So he gets that revelation, Paul does, and then he goes on to, to say this. He says, therefore, I will gladly boast in my weaknesses. He's going to boast in his weaknesses, he says. So Christ's power can rest on him. Then he says, I will delight, and that is why I will delight in my weaknesses, in my in insults. He said he Paul said he's gonna delight in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulty. He said he's gonna delight in all those things, and then he says, Because when I'm weak, I am strong. I arrived home. But that's a great revelation that Paul had. Like you know that there's no social media back in the days. You know what the social media was? Well, there was social media. It just wasn't Facebook or Instagram. It was pen and paper. Or it was, what do you know? You just sitting in front of someone talking to someone. That was social media. Or talking to a group. So he's delighting. He's boasting about his weaknesses. We don't do that on social media, right? We put the... The absolute best filter after we check 30 photos to make sure we got the right lighting, right? The right angle on my face. You don't want to be down here so you can see all that. Like it's got to be the right angle, right? The most complimentary angle for my body shape. Um, we never post about issues. We have concerns, difficulties, hardships, insults. None of that. We only post about our wins, our victories, right? We're always... You know, we're faking it until we're making it at work. At, at work, We're faking it until we make it. Um, we're even doing that at school and college. Have you ever, I, it happened to me, have you ever um, heard a professor say, does anybody have questions? If you don't understand this, go ahead and raise your hand. And you knew you didn't know it, but you were unwilling to raise your hand because you're like, no, I, like, I don't want people to think I'm dumb. Well, that's dumb because you're paying thousands of dollars to learn something. So it means you don't know it yet. And here is a professor getting paid and you won't say, hey, go ahead and can you can you say that again in a more relatable way so I can understand it? I can't grasp it. If I would have said that at some point, I'm sure there would have been a sigh of relief in that entire class because I'm sure I was not the only one. Or how about at work, right? You know, if someone approaches you and you go, man, you know, we got to do this thing. But guess what? I have no idea how to get this done. Will you help me? I know you got to turn in something similar. Do you understand it? Oh, you don't understand it. And then, you know, you create this camaraderie and you lock arms and you start doing it. Um, 
But yeah, we don't do that. We're like, we act like we know what what we need to do. We're afraid to admit mistakes. We're afraid to say, hey, I don't understand this. We're afraid to show like defeat, um, failure. Why is that? It doesn't come from the Bible. God says what? He says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. So guess what? If you don't open up, if you don't show weakness, if you don't allow God, if you don't allow God that room to operate because you're too proud, the Bible says God opposes the proud, right? He opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So think about that as you get into this week, deep into this work week, and you're tired and you're struggling. Make sure that you acknowledge that. Um, and you know, God works through people, so you can talk to people. You can ask for help, seek counsel. All right. God bless you. Um, have a good afternoon. It was Misery Monday for the Redskins and for many other NFL teams. Guess what? I didn't see them out there today. I didn't see any Redskins flags on cars. Why is that? Why is that? Because people don't want to acknowledge that they lost. But hey, man, we're one and one. It's all right. So. I hope you stay uh, plugged in. I hope you see God. And again, make sure in your weaknesses, you you make room for God. And He's gonna, His grace will be sufficient for you. God bless.